I used to travel fast and see as many places as possible, but I find it interesting to slow down for a bit to observe, listen, and feel the sereneness of the place. Taking a leisure trip to sleepy Ipoh, I had an amazing and pleasant journey. Ipoh used to be a drowsy village, then surpassed a rapid growth in the late 19th century when a huge deposit of tin was found on this land. In the 1970s, Ipoh witnessed a decline and neglect after the depletion of tin deposits and tin price collapse. Good news is that Ipoh tourism begins to flourish again. More and more tourists are attracted by its colonial heritage, cuisine, and nature. Ipoh is situated between Kuala Lumpur and Georgetown in Penang. It's convenient to travel to Ipoh by bus or KTM. You actually can take a day trip to Ipoh from these two cities. Staying over one or two nights in Ipoh is highly recommended because there are so many great things to discover. The old Ipoh is the first place to see. You can explore the old Ipoh by walking. Concubine Lane is popular with restaurant, souvenir, and gift shops. You also can stop by some museums in Old Ipoh, such as Perak History Museum, Tin Mining Museum, etc., to learn about Ipoh history. There are colonial landmarks scattered at different corners in the Old Ipoh. You can explore the heritage trail to admire 24 heritage buildings from the British colonial period. Another highlight in the Old Ipoh is the war art murals drawn by talented street art artists. So, where are the best places to try local cuisine and do more shopping? Head to the east side of the Kinta River for the new Ipoh. It's more lively and busier at night. The Great Fire in 1892 destroyed half of the city and the new town was rebuilt with the same housing style combining Chinese and British colonial architecture. And you can find famous coffee shops and restaurants that have existed for over half a decade. Cave Temple is typical and a must visit in Ipoh. Among dozens of them, I visited the notable Sampo Dong and Kelok Dong temples. Sampo Dong or the Three Buddhas Cave, located around 3 miles from the city center, is the oldest temple in Ipoh. A monk from China surpassed Ipoh in 1890 and stopped here for meditation till the end of his life. Other monks and nuns carried on their practice here and the temple was constructed in the 1950s. Kelok Tong Cave Temple and Zen Garden is another cave temple nestled inside an impressively huge cavity on the mountain.
The garden behind this temple offers an idyllic look. You can take a leisure walk around the lake in the garden or take a boat ride on the river under Cast Mountains. Not so far from Kelok Tong Temple, sporting the Mirror Lake, another famous travel place for locals. It was a quarry for stone exploitation, which finished five years ago. These days, visitors come to enjoy the picturesque scene of the lake with the shadow of standing limestone outcrops. Want to see some more cast outcrops and culture in Ipoh? Let's hang out around 2 hours at Ching Xinling Leisure and Cultural Village. It's a man-made place set with the limestone mountains. There are houses displaying so many artifacts introducing the culture of the main ethnic in Malaysia in the 60s, including Chinese, Malay and Indian. I love the walk up to the houses on the mountain slope. The landscape offers a beautiful background to take photos of myself. If you wish to see more cave temples and admire more colonial architecture, let's visit the Perak Temple and Kelly's Castle. As I stayed for two days only, I decided to travel a bit farther 20 miles to see Gua Temple. This is among the biggest and longest caves in Malaysia Peninsula. The cave is nearly 2 miles long and it has existed since 8000 BC. Gua Temple means coconut shells and the cavities on the ceiling appear like the shell shape. There are four touring options to explore Goa Temple. Tour 1 and 2 can be done on your own. I bought a ticket for Tour 2 ending at platform No. 5 called Top of the World. Adventurers who opt for Tour 3 and 4 we we'll carry on the journey going down from the top of the world to darker and colder routes and gonna get wet. On the other hand, if you ain't fit enough, just enjoy the shortest walking distance and stop by platform node 3. Wa Temporum is a large and impressive cave with a variety of lively limestone stalactite and stalagmite. And here is another reason that Wa Temporum is definitely worth a visit. Remember not to book grab from Ipoh to Gua Temple like I did, as you cannot grab one for the way back. I was fortunate to meet a family who gave me a ride. On the way back, we stopped by a lovely place called Hoga Gaharu Tea Valley. With 10 ringgit for the ticket, they operate a trip of one hour for visitors to enjoy the view of Tea Valley and learn about Aga Wood. I enjoy the chances to walk in the greenish Aga Wood jungle 
with sunlight shining through trees, smell the nature and breeze. And here is the driver's explanation about the smell of the wood and functions of the agar wood. The unique smell is from the tree, the, what, the, what we call the oldest tree, because the tree antibody is like that. From the tree antibody, you can, uh, you can take the smell. Because this is a god smell, the god tree, you know, god tree, god smell and everything. Inside the tree, inner part of the tree, we can take the oil, the, the smell from the oil and the instant oil. Incense oil is good for the perfume and also the prayer stoistic. And even the leaf, we are doing a tea, da, tea down there for the health. Despite some unexpected things, my evil trip has been accomplished and totally pleasant. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy Epoch and subscribe for more travel stories from me.